Welcome to the Brains Magazine podcast, a podcast with in-depth interviews and conversations with world-class entrepreneurs, expert coaches, industry leaders, and international celebrities. Get exclusive insight into the world of business, mindset, leadership, and lifestyle with your host, Mark Sefton. Welcome to this next episode of the Brains Magazine podcast. And today I would say we've probably got one of the highest profiles we've had since we launched back in April. We have a man who is the inventor of the infomercial, also the original shark on the TV hit show Shark Tank. This gentleman has generated over $5 billion in business. We have the one and only Kevin Harrington with us today. How are you, Kevin? Great to be here. I'm fantastic. Look, looking forward to hanging out for a bit here. Well, first of all, I want to say an early happy birthday for you because I noticed that it's October 15th uh, very soon. Uh, and interestingly, oh, yeah. Kevin, mine is the 16th of October. Oh, great, great, great month. Uh, I have my, my brother is the 11th and uh, I know a lot of Libras. It, uh, it's, it's good, good, good uh, timing. So Thanks. Thanks for letting me know. And thanks for the best wishes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you must be cool. I always say all the cool kids are born in October. So you I like that. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right, let's dive straight in then, Kevin, because I want to glean as much out of you as I can in, in the 30 minutes we, we have today. I would love to know, are you addicted to success and business? Is it an addiction for you? I think so. I mean, it, um, I, I, I get... I'm very uh, a very motivated type of person, and I guess you know I go back to the the, the earlier days when I was a young entrepreneur. Um, you know, you allow your mood swings to take you up and down, and you know it's it, it's not easy being an entrepreneur. First of all, you know I'll never forget when I first decided that's what I'm going to do. My mother was like, "Oh my God, no, no way! My, you know, you need to be a, a banker, a lawyer, you know, a doctor, go to school, graduate from college. There's no way you can be an entrepreneur." So you have all these forces against you. Bankers don't want to lend you money. Your you know relatives, people that you hire, end up stealing from you. So it's not easy being an entrepreneur. Once you kind of figure things out. And, you know, it, it took me a number of years to, to figure them out. But once I figured them out, it's, you know, have a, a, a great, you know, in my case, you know, I, I was in the product business. So give me a good product, give me the right team around me, um, create a good selling message, have inventory, capital, and you're going to be able to be successful in, in many cases, not 100%. But, you know, so once I figured out kind of the formula, it was great executing on that formula and 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 then trying to focus on getting the highest percentage of successes. So in the earliest days, we were maybe successful one out of 10 times. Mm. And, and that's not a great average. And you think, how can you make money losing nine out of 10 times? But as we got better and as we honed our skills and we got the success formulas, we got down to where we could be successful one out of three times. And, and now the, 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 the success and, the, and, and that addiction became more powerful. And I, and I, and I will say that, you know, certainly uh, having winning projects, businesses, there's no, no better feeling than that. When, when you come into something, make it happen, contribute and be part of the overall success of, 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 a, of a project. Mm, and the funny thing is, even if you do succeed, I mean, I still have family members now, Kevin. I'm sure you probably can relate that say, when are you going to get a proper job? <laughs> yeah, I don't get it anymore, but I did for, for you know, many years. But I'll never forget. God bless my mom. She, you know, when, when I quit college and, you know, I'm, I'm one of six kids and, you know, my older brothers and sisters, they, you know, they all graduated with honors and uh, on to corporate jobs, teaching positions, this, that, whatever. Then I come along and I tell my parents I'm quitting, you know, my second year of college. Well, I had 25 employees that 
every day after school, I would go to my office and work till 10, 11 o'clock at night with 25 people, get back to school the next morning at eight o'clock. And I just, you know, I was like, look, I don't need both and I can't do both. So, yeah, but yeah, I mean, for years, my mom was, you know, when are you going to go back and get that degree? And, and, you know, like your, your, your brothers and sisters have done, right. It's, you know, I, I, I think this is one of the exciting things for entrepreneurs. You know, you, it, it's funny. I've, I've done a lot of podcasts and, and, and I've never had that word used the addiction of the entrepreneurial success. And, 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 and I think you hit on something big there, Mark. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm hoping I can bring out a few more uh, insights as well. I know the last question I've got for you has is, is definitely stumped a few. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hitting you with that one. Now, you talked about how in business, not every venture is guaranteed. What would you say is the main reason why a startup fails? What, what have you seen as the main reason? So I, there's a lot of reasons people fail. Um, one of the, you know, let's start at the beginning, though. So I think some people try to do something before it's ready. Um, I, I, in other words, they haven't figured out the business model. They, you know, they, they just they get this idea and they're so excited about it that they just start, you know, saying this is what they're going to do. But when you look at the, the business model and what is how much capital is it going to take? What's the return going to be on that capital if you are successful? All right. And then, you know, do you have proof of concept? Too often people come to me with an idea that's half baked, not ready, not ready for investment and, and it needs some work. So so I think that that's first of all, I said now it the, the let's, let's assume you've done all of that and now you need capital. It, if if putting capital onto the fire can grow the business, that, that's a good thing because I, I've been involved in a number of deals where the capital is not going to make it successful. It's only going to prove out that there is no future in this situation, right? And, and so we try to stay away from those. But it, I like to invest in something that has proven itself out, is now starting to roll, but it needs the capital to grow and, 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 and hit some, some tremendous um, multiples of, of return on, on, on that capital. So, so I think it, depending upon where you are in that cycle, as an investor, I'm, today, I'm not as big on investing in complete startups that, you know, if, if something, somebody comes to me with an idea on a napkin, we're two to three years out from seeing dime one. Those, I say, bring it to me when you get it further. Get a prototype, get this, get that, all right? If, if you come to me and you've got a product that just tested on Amazon and it's doing some good numbers and you need now more money for inventories and this and that, that's a much easier investment for me. So it all depends on where you're investing in the cycle, where the product, the business is, and, and, and all of that, because the, the further along it is, the higher the chance of success I'm going to have. And that's why I now today, it, I, I, I wait for things that are more in my sweet spot because I mean, 20 years ago, I wasn't getting pitched every day. So I had to develop things, take the risk. Now I can partner with people because I'm getting pitches and I don't have to invent things from from ground zero mm. yeah i was gonna say getting rid of all that headache and you really being able to cherry pick and it's wonderful when you can uh, make that adjustment as you go through experience and you go you know that just that just sucks the life out of me i'm gonna i'm gonna wait and bring you know the sweet spot to to the mustard yes i love that now you've been in business a long time kevin um you know helped over 500 like you've launched over 500 products and had your hand in a number of massive, you know, business ventures. What has been the single most biggest difference in the way you did business uh, or at least in the business world? What is the main difference in business when you first started out and business today? Okay. Very good question. So uh, when I first started out and, and just, I, I, I'm going to take about one minute to give you a quick overview of how that started. I, you know, I was, 
um, one of six kids out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And um, my father was an entrepreneur. He owned a, a restaurant, Harrington's Irish Pub. And I started working when I was 11 years old in my dad's restaurant. I was a bar back and a dishwasher and all that kind of stuff. And I said, Dad, I'm, you know, I'm making a dollar an hour. This is back literally in the in the 60s and the 70s, right? And he says, son, he says, he said, I was waiting for you to tell me you wanted to make money. Okay. And I'm like, well, well, I want to dad. And he said, great. You need to start your own business. So I, I had high school businesses. I had a college business. I installing heating and air conditioning systems when I was in college and I had 25 employees doing millions of dollars in sales. And this was back in the seventies, right? So a long time ago. And, and one day I bought a house, I ordered cable TV, and I'm watching television. And, and the early days of cable was just 30 channels. And I remember going through the first 30. And it's like, it, you know, if if you were watching, you know, I mean, and I know in, in, in England, for example, they have BBC One and Two and Channel Three and Channel Four. In the early days, that's pretty much all you had, right? Once cable and satellite hit, lots of channels. Well, I got to channel 30, and there was nothing on. It was Discovery Channel called the cable company. And I said, you know, I got CNN News and HBO movies and MTV music, but nothing on Channel 30 Discovery. They said, oh, that's only, it's a new channel. They, they don't have a budget for 24 hours a day. It's an 18 hour a day channel. You tuned in dur during the downtime. So I cut a deal to start filling that downtime. That's how I created this infomercial industry, putting all these different demonstrators and, 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 and people that would demonstrate their products and kitchen products and fitness products and golf and, you know, beauty, et cetera. This was the early, this now is the early eighties. We started this back in 82, 83, 84, early eighties on, and everything was TV filling the television airwaves. We were filling discovery. I went to England and did a deal with Rupert Murdoch for Sky Channel, and we were running all across Europe. And then we went to the Middle East and we, with Arab radio television, Sheikh Salah Camel, and we were running there and then Asia. Everything was television, television, television. So I was the As Seen on TV guy. I owned As Seen on TV Inc., As Seen on TV.com. We had thousands of products on our websites running all over the world in 100 countries. Now, Let's fast forward because your question was, what is the difference today? And let me, I'm going to give you one great example because Mark, when, when I built these different products and, you know, we, we did Jack LaLanne's Juicer and Tony Little's Fitness and George Foreman and Billy Mays and Suzanne Summers and all these great celebrities, Kim Kardashian's first infomercial and 50 Cent is headphones. So when, when we got down you know, uh, uh, 10 years ago, I was sitting and I, and I was seeing something bad happening in my business. I, I had built this business to over $500 million in sales. So we peaked. And then what was happening, you know, normally you want to see a growth curve that goes like this. Well, I had gone to 500 million and now I was peaking and I was on the backside of the belt. And it's like, wait a minute, why are sales going down? Well, I owned this whole ass scene in TV world. It, it was changing. 50 plus percent decline in television viewership in the last 10 years. Why? They're on Facebook. They're on Instagram. They're on TikTok. They're on Netflix. They're on all the streaming channels. Disney Plus has 100 million viewers now, subscribers. So, and, and I'm the as seen on TV guy and my sales are dropping. Guess what I did? I have a saying, no when to hold them know when to fold them, okay? I'm not afraid to take some profits off the table. This is another thing that many entrepreneurs forget about. They build, they build, they build. They may see some changes in the market and think, they may think, oh, well, that's a temporary thing. Let's weather the storm. Well, I, I sold that company. Sales of our, after I sold it are down 80%. I knew when to fold them because things were changing, right? Now, what did we do? We shifted into digital and we shifted into utilizing influencers, micro influencers, all the new things that are happening today. First project that I did nine years ago, sold all the assets, okay? So 
Think about this, Mark. You're, you're doing, you've done billions of dollars in sales in the world of as seen on TV, public companies that go from a dollar to $20, take some chips off the table. But now I see something happening. I sold it. I sold as seen in TV Inc. as seen in TV.com made great return on my investment. And I said, I'm going to refocus in this new area of explosion, the digital revolution. And so first company that I got involved with was a company called Celsius. And this is an energy drink in the United States. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but this started from zero nine years ago. All right. Mm -hmm. And I was on the board brought in, help raise money, boom, ba boom, ba boom. Now, we never used one dime of advertising on TV. So here I am, an entrepreneur for dozens of years utilizing television. What did I do here? We brought on some influencers, micro influencers, people, fitness, Instagram influencers. We have thousands of them pitching this product on the internet. And guess what happened? The stores started wanting it. We're now in 180,000 stores. This company went from zero to $6 billion in the last nine years, okay? From zero. And we didn't spend one dime on television. We used digital, we used Facebook, we used Instagram, we used uh, uh, Instagram, unbelievable with these influencers, TikTok huge. And so what I'm saying, Mark, is this, is you, you do need to know when to hold them and fold them. But this is why I align my interest and in, in my businesses with some really cool people that can help me understand when we've gotten to the top, when's the best time to raise capital, sell the company, merge the company, or do something creative. And, and, and I think the transition for me out of as seen on TV into digital has been great and allowed me to have some really great opportunities like this. You can imagine, this is a public company. Uh, the stock, when I got involved, was 10 cents a share. It went, by the time I signed my agreement to join, I got my shares at 22 cents and the stock yesterday was $90. So it's a, it's a pretty, good return on investment, I would say. And of course, now I've had a chance to take a few more chips off the table. And that's always a fun process too. Wow, there was so much in there. I, I got to try and capture it all from, I was just uh, hooked by listening because, you know, they say that you should ask great questions in life and, and they say that you should listen more than you speak. And, uh, you know, I think you're talking about, there's a couple of things. Firstly, I was thinking about you have to evolve to be relevant. I think it was Barbara Cochran, your fellow shark, who said, if you steal the limelight, you steal the lion's share. Uh, and you've got to have relevance, you know, and, and you were talking about evolving and how you've evolved, evolved from TV in, into digital. And then I was thinking about, was that was that an, an innate intuition within you, Kevin, of knowing when to fold them? Like when you say fold them, is it something intuitive or do you see something on the periphery that makes you think, now's the time so what what started happening is you know i i would launch products on television and we were having a tough time um because viewership had dropped but the rates were still high then i'm seeing my you know i have, I have two kids one's 33 and one's 23 and my 33 year old has been has been with me in business uh, since you know getting out of college for about 13 years he, he's starting now to say hey dad did you see this product over here? It just went from zero to $20 million in sales. And I'm like, really, where did it run? Oh, it was on Instagram and Facebook, no TV. So what happened is I started seeing others doing it. And, and that's when I realized, wait a minute, th this is a whole different skill set. Infomercials are 30 minutes in length. They have three 10 minute sequences to create a 30 minute show. And inside each 10 minutes is, I, we, I call it a tease, please, and seize. Okay, so this is something you may want to address also. Tease, you tease them by getting their attention. You please them by selling them and giving them all the benefits. And you seize them by getting, um, you know, a, and by making an irresistible offer. Now, we do that for 10 minutes, and then we do it all over again in 10 minutes and all over again in 10 minutes. That format 
That's not going to work on Facebook. You can't take 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. You have to do a tease, please, seize in sometimes in 60 seconds, in 90 seconds, in two minutes. You might get three minutes. But we, we had to readapt our selling processes. And, and But at the end of the day, we're still doing it utilizing the power of video. So there's something that's been constant through there. You know, we created videos in the S Seaman TV business and billions of dollars in sales. Well, now we're creating shorter videos on the internet because the attention span is way less. So this, this is now the movement. And, and let's put it this way, where, where TV, yes, we had certain limitations with TV because we were running a lot of these long infomercial formats with digital it, it's 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 almost endless that you know how much exposure you can get. So um, the the power of Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and all these. I mean, every this weekend, the huge story in the, in the, the New York Times here about all these TikTokers that are just making massive amounts of success. And and so you know, I, I tuned into this nine years ago because I I saw the handwriting on the wall. And, and it, it, it turned out to, to be a, a, a good timing for that movement for me. Yeah, it's just really interesting, I think, just uh, the level at which you operate. And, and a couple of the other people that I've had on this show, like I think of Brian Smith from Ugg Boots, he, he knew as well when to sell that company. And I think, yeah. there's, I think there's a place there. I don't even know whether I've come across a book either that actually educates people of when to get out because i actually think that's a really interesting thing that i'm really seeing the, the higher the profile of person i'm now interviewing uh this that element of knowing when to get out of knowing when you've done it or taken it to where you can uh, i think is is so paramount to the next level that i think many of us haven't even gleaned yet so i think maybe kevin the maybe something there uh, for you if you haven't uh, already created something around that i must ask you and i know time's flowing what would you say are the three main important questions to have the answer to when preparing to pitch to an investor you know you've talked about how you know you don't necessarily invest now at the at the big embryotic stage but when somebody needs maybe extra capital etc yeah. but what would be the the three main questions that they should have an answer to in in order for you to even give it you know the light of day right uh, first thing that i love to hear about is the the background of the entrepreneur i mean there's a couple different philosophies and, and let's take a minute to explore this I, I i've heard kevin o'leary say that he likes to bet on the jockey all right now so so if you're betting on the jockey and and i'm going to give you an alternative view of betting on the jockey in a second okay but let's let's say that that's part of the bet is the jockey. So what is that jockey's track record? How many races has he raced? How many has he won? Did he place? Did he show, right? Well, for me, that involves also how many businesses have you started? Have you been involved in any, or is this your first one? How much capital have you raised? Have you been, how much did you return to those investors? And did you ever have an exit? And the reason being is as an investor, when I put my money into a business, I want to see a return on that investment. If somebody says to me, oh, I'm never going to sell this. I'm going to keep this forever, right? Well, that, that, that's not going to bring return to the investors then. So, so you know, what's your track record? Did you, did you raise money? Have you had other businesses? Did you have an exit? That, that's an important thing. Secondly is, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll admit in the earliest days of my entrepreneurship, I had too much ego about my ability to do a lot. I was not a finance guy. I was not an operations guy. I was getting murdered in my business in finance and operations, but I was a pighead at letting the right people join my team. So I say, yes, the jockey's important, but guess what? If, 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 the, if the jockey has a poor trainer, and he's, and he's not getting the right meds and he's not, he doesn't have the right kind of doctor and, and physical conditioning and this and that he's not, he's going to show up 
and, and fail. So what's that dream team around you? And, and, and in the world of horses, you know, I mean, I, I know a trainer that says, a, a horse trainer, he says, I can put any jockey on my horse and he's gonna, gonna do well in that race because the horse is ready to go. So, so again, the jockey and his track record, then the ability of the jockey that's entrepreneur to surround himself with an amazing dream team of experts, finance, operations, digital marketing. And that leads really to the third thing nowadays that I look for um, is it, number, it, 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 it involves some of the others, but you, you need to have a plan to raise capital. I mean, it, you can have the greatest idea, the greatest business and a great team around you. But if you don't have the ability to bring capital in and utilize the team and, and everything in the process, it's just not going to go. And, and in the earliest days, I was able to raise some capital, not enough capital. And so we had challenges with that. And, and, and it, it involved me having to get better dream team members so that we could raise capital because certain people that were part of our dream team that we brought on eventually, they had great skills at raising capital and exiting also. So uh, you can kind of solve all these problems by getting the right dream team to, in, in, in the process. And again, it's not just that jockeys that's going to jump on that horse and win it. It's, it's a collaborative effort of a lot of like minds with a great vision. And, and last thing, that entrepreneur has to be rock solid and, and really motivated and ready to go. I mean, because you're going to have, you know, lots of challenges and stoppage, up, you know, things coming at you. Um, I mean, so I, I, I've had people tell me they, they went 38 times to raise capital before they finally got that money and then they built the billion dollar business. So you can't give up. You got to have persistence. Love that. And and we'll hear uh, from time, especially from investors. I've heard people say your product sucks, but you're really investable. If you have to take, if you have to make a decision, Kevin, on whether the person is investable, but their product isn't, what is more important to you? Just brutally straight down the line. Brutally honest, it, it's more the product. I mean, because it it in many cases, you know, we we the product we, we utilize the strengths of the entrepreneur that's involved with the product, but it's when when we form a venture on a product. OK, I mean, I'm going to give you an, an example. I just happen to have been using this here today. This is an eyeglass cleaner, the three step system. First one, this brush comes out. It gets all the dust off your glasses. Then it goes back. It retracts. It opens up. It's a double sided carbon cleaning system that cleans both sides of your glasses simultaneously. All right. And now it's there. There it is. And then it cleans itself electrostatically. Boom. All right. Now, the people that brought us this, they, they were one of the original founders of, the, um, of, a, of a big brand, uh, and, I'll, and I'm just, it just escaped my mind, but I'll think of it in a second. But they brought us this, but they were not having success with it. They built a billion dollar business previously. So the, the entrepreneur was, he, he was very powerful, but he wasn't having success with this. He had put it on television. It didn't work. Um, and we came in and did digital and we used affiliates and we, we were using magical transformations. Make a long story short with what, what we didn't need. All we needed from him was this. We created the videos, the visuals, the power, and we're selling a thousand a day, 5,000 a day, 10,000 a day, 15,000 a day. We got this, this product became a hundred million dollar product. But we didn't need the inventor on a day to day basis because we were doing all the work utilizing the power of digital, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and, and, and et cetera, and, and our videos and our, and our you know, kind of expertise. So we, can, we, we have the expertise in all of these areas to help bring products like this to the market in a big way. Love it. Right. I've got two questions to get in before we have to end this. And I honestly think I could do it all over again, ask you a, a total different array of questions and have just as much fun. Uh, you wrote the book, uh, Becoming a Key Person of Influence. How do we increase our influence, Kevin, in today's world? 
It's very important that entrepreneurs understand that process. Too many people start a business, hang their shingle up and just expect, oh, well, you know, people are going to find me. You know, I've got friends and relatives. Everyone's going to tell everybody, put out a press release. No, it's in today's world. And this is something I was actually was offered a, 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 an opportunity to go meet Richard Branson, go hang out at Necker Island with him. This is 10 years plus ago. And and Richard said to me, Kevin, he said, I love all these things you've been doing with this as seen on TV business and, and Tony Little and George Foreman and all these guys. He said, but I don't know who in the heck you are. It's like, how come you're not more famous? You never built your brand, did you? And, and I'm like, you know, I was down there to get some good advice. That was it. I got to go build my brand. So what did I do? I went home. I started writing books. I started doing podcasts. I mean, this is what it's all about, you know? And 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 as I was launching books, I mean, I, I launched a book recently. My publisher said, will you do a hundred podcasts to help launch this book? And I said, well, that's quite a bit, but yes, I will. And we did a hundred and they said that went so well. And we're now number two on the New York, on, on the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. How about another hundred? <laughs> we did 190 podcasts, but this, what, what, what am I talking about? Raising your profile, creating content, creating, doing from podcasts to videos, to interviews, to keynote presentations. I, I was speaking and on the road, 200 plus days a year prior to COVID. And, and this was at the houseware show, speaking to all the people coming for housewares and the same thing at the fitness show and the golf show and boom. So you've got to get out there. You can't sit, you know, I mean, COVID hurt a lot of people, slowed people down a little bit on the, on the travel side, but it gave people a chance virtually to connect with millions of people that they maybe weren't able to before. So great opportunity for all of this to happen right now. Very true. Last question then. If Kevin Harrington didn't exist, why would the world need to create him? Say if I if Kevin Harrington didn't exist, what why, say why would time? the world need to create him? What 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 and I'm still I'm sorry I'm not understanding. It's probably my English accent. Okay. <laughs> if Kevin Harrington didn't exist, why would the world need to create him? Oh, great. Okay. Well, I, I think that's a great question. And another one I've never heard before. So, Mark, you're doing a great job. Um, I would say this. Uh, I, I, I have I brought to the world, I believe, some exciting new ways of selling products and creating um, and creating success for entrepreneurs. And so, I mean, I started out as an entrepreneur myself to build businesses and make money. But now it's become a life passion to help other entrepreneurs do the same. And I think that, yes, you can be all about yourself your whole life and just focus on you, 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 me, me, me. That's very selfish. I now have chosen to take a path of helping others and and, and partnering and advising and counseling and all of that. And I think that that's why the world would want to create me because I'm going to be there to help millions of entrepreneurs going forward. And I think, you know, th that really, I, I don't know if you know this, Mark, but this was my, my, my last book is called Mentor to Millions. And this is about, you know, the fact that, you know, I went on Shark Tank and you know, I was we, we, we were getting eight to 10 million people a week watching that show. And now all the shows I did are in reruns on a global basis. So mentoring, coaching, counseling, partnering. Uh, this is really what I choose to spend a lot of time. And hey, look, we're doing this podcast. I've never met you. I'm not getting paid for this. Why am I doing this to help the entrepreneurial community understand the power of being an entrepreneur, partnering with the right people and giving them some tools to do it. And that's why I just love being here, Mark. And that's why I'm happy to say thanks for having me. It's been a, it's been a great interview. Yeah, I've loved it as well. How do people find out more about you? Uh, where, where would you like them to go so they can find out about your books and, and all the great things that you're doing, Kevin? Yes. Thank you. Uh, my website, um, and just actually, you know, you could go to kevinharrington.com. 
TV. And you'll see uh, we've got some free reports and some things there. Um, you know, it, it's it's a it's a good place just to check in, get on some lists and downloads, and and um, and we 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 do events on on a regular basis uh, now that. You know, I mean, COVID is still here, but, you know, we're, we're, we're doing very managed, um, small, smaller type events, you know, like in October, um, we'll, we're going to put on a, a mastermind right here in St. Pete, Florida, um, October 19th and 20th type of thing. And we'll do, you know, so um, if they go to my website, kevinharrington.tv, they'll check it all out and find out all the, the things that we're up to and how we might be able to help them out. Beautiful. Kevin, I've really enjoyed it. Hopefully I'll see you on Clubhouse uh, sometime soon. I don't know if you're still uh, still in that app, but I'm enjoying it. I do three uh, oh, yeah. sessions a week, but uh, great to That's speak great. with I, you today. I did a lot of Clubhouse segments and uh, a little fewer nowadays, but it, it, it's good to hear that it's still 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 poking along. That's great. Thank Cheers, you, Mark. Kevin. Take care. Good being here, buddy. Take care. Thank you for joining this episode with me, Mark Sefton. I hope you've really enjoyed it. Feel free to leave us a positive review on iTunes. And I look forward to welcoming you back to the next episode of the Brains Magazine podcast.